Jim Bridenstein, the 13th and current administrator of NASA, has been entrusted with stewarding one of America's most cherished federal agencies through this hyperpartisan era. Despite a tumultuous confirmation process, his first two months at the helm have been smooth. He's reconciled with Democrats who opposed him and has won the public support of groups advocating for space exploration. At this point in NASA's history, Bridenstine has the task of incorporating the private sector into the agency's long-term missions to establish a permanent presence on the moon and land an astronaut on Mars. I visited his office on June 20 to discuss his progress. If we are going to go in a sustained way, it cannot be a United States government-exclusive mission. It has to be a mission that includes our commercial partners in this country and our international partners, Bridenstine told News Pulse News. We think that it is possible that as early as next year we could have a commercial company delivering something to the surface of the moon on behalf of NASA. That is an aggressive timeline, and I'm not guaranteeing it, but it's what we're shooting for. Since President Trump took office, the biggest change to NASA policy came on December 11 with the signing of Space Policy Directive 1 which calls on the administrator to lead an innovative and sustainable program with commercial and international partners to return to the moon to establish a base for eventual manned missions to Mars. Shortly after Bridenstine arrived, NASA released a request for proposals from contractors to deliver small shipments to the moon, known as Commercial Lunar Payload Services, CLPS. Bridenstine said there could be as many as a dozen companies bidding for this opportunity. From there, NASA will use those technologies to carry larger payloads, such as planetary rovers and robotic prospectors to dig for water ice and to excavate regolith, the loose rock and dust atop the moon's bedrock, for lunar analysis and construction projects. I said it doesn't sound too far out because NASA achieved President John F. Kennedy's ambitious goal of sending an American to the moon before the end of the 60s. Bridenstine agreed and added that today's NASA benefits from many things it didn't have back then, including the commercial space industries, more economical reusable rockets and miniaturized electronics. But there's another side to this equation. The current NASA strategy of working with commercial and international partners takes this reality into account. The agency wants to build a sustainable fiscal model that will enable further exploration. That's the vision here. We're trying to accomplish the same objective, but we're doing it in a way that's never been done before, he said. A cornerstone to NASA's vision is the Gateway program to establish a small outpost that orbits around the moon so astronauts can study its entire surface using telerobotics. Bridenstein said one reason Gateway is important is that once you're on the surface of the moon, you can only explore the particular area where you land. It's one of the reasons we believed that the moon was largely dry and barren from 1972 up until 2008, when a probe launched by India discovered potentially hundreds of billions of tons of water ice on the surface, especially at the poles. I want to be clear. We are going to the surface of the moon. The gateway does not compete with this. We are going to the surface of the moon. We are also going to do gateway, Bridenstein said. As News Pulse News reported last year, Trump's overall space policy is to hand over most low-Earth orbit missions to the private sector and have NASA focus on deep space exploration. However, establishing a space force was the most talked-about proposal at the time of my NASA visit. Trump wants a sixth branch of the U.S. armed services that's equal in stature to the Air Force. I think Trump's instincts are correct. We're seeing more threats in space than we've ever seen before, Bridenstein said. Space has become very contested. The president of course is probably getting those same briefs we got in Congress, and he wants to do something about it. Bridenstein said similar ideas have already been considered in Congress, namely a space corps that would have reported to the Secretary of the Air Force the way the Marine Corps reports to the Navy. That idea passed the House but not the Senate. In the National Defense Authorization Act there was a Space Force. We called it a Space Corps. The President seems to want to call it a Space Force, which in my opinion he's right. That at least sounds cooler, 
Bridenstine said. But I think this is an important concept and an idea whose time has come. As a member of the National Space Council, I look forward to working on that as a project. When asked whether he believes in extraterrestrial life, Bridenstine said, as far as intelligent, I don't know. But he brought up NASA's recent discoveries that affect the possibility of current or former life on Mars, methane cycles that track the planet's seasons, evidence that three quarters of its surface was once ocean, a magnetosphere that protects it from radiation and the solar winds and a thick atmosphere. All of those factors paint a picture of a planet that was habitable at one point. I think it's important for us as an agency to know if in fact life here on Earth is unique or if we are alone in the universe. I think that's one of our missions, to look and discover if there's life or was life not only in the universe but in our own solar system, Bridenstine said. But I'm certainly not going to try to give you probabilities. Bridenstein, who served three terms in Congress as a Republican from Oklahoma, has served on the House's Armed Services Committee and the Science, Space and Technology Committee. He was a naval aviator from 1998 until 2007 and served in the Naval Reserve from 2010 to 2015, primarily piloting an E-2C Hawkeye. He also directed the Tulsa Air and Space Museum and Planetarium but doesn't have any formal degrees in science. His supporters concede that Bridenstine doesn't have the technical expertise of many previous administrators but don't think that's necessary for the role. After all, James E. Webb, the administrator during the glory days from 1961 to 1968, was a lawyer by training but became arguably the greatest director in NASA history. It's not critical to have a deep knowledge of technology, Hopkins said. The more important thing is to have somebody who understands the importance of commercial space, and he's very strong in that area. Also, backing from Congress won't hurt either, because a lot of things a NASA administrator has to do is work with Congress. A major sticking point for Democrats early on were his statements on climate change. Senator Brian Schatz, D. Hawaii grilled Bridenstine during a November 2017 Senate hearing for failing to affirm that humans are the primary driver of climate change but thanked him during a May Senate hearing for listening to scientists and evolving on this issue. When News Pulse News asked about his current stance on climate change, Bridenstine said, here's what I know. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. We have increased its levels in the atmosphere significantly. Therefore, we have contributed to climate change. Bridenstine said he believes NASA scientists who have published reports saying humans are the primary cause of the warming we are seeing, we have some of the best scientists here at NASA, and they are sincere people, and I have no reason to doubt the study they put together. He took issue with the suggestion that climate change was a new issue for him. As former chairman of the House's Environmental Subcommittee, he said he's heard lots of testimony on this issue over the years. As a Navy veteran, he said he's long known that the U.S. has to defend territory in the Arctic that it never had to before. So, we can stick our heads in the sand, but the Arctic is not what it used to be as far as the ice goes. We have to figure out as a country, how does our national security posture need to change based on those realities, he said. Senator Bill Nelson, D. Fla, who as a NASA astronaut orbited the Earth aboard the Space Shuttle Columbia in 1986, led the Senate Democrats' charge against Bridenstine's confirmation, passionately arguing that he lacked the needed credentials. News Pulse News asked Nelson for his thoughts on Bridenstine's first two months at NASA. Congressman Bridenstine is only just beginning to get his arms around the depth and breadth of the challenges involved in running NASA, and I sincerely hope for his success. Nelson said. I'm encouraged to see how his views on climate change have evolved, based on his exchange with Senator Schatz in a recent Senate hearing, and I'm also pleased that he is seeking to have a qualified space professional as his deputy. Rogue NASA, one of the many rogue and alt accounts that emerged after Trump's election, is simultaneously an advocate and a watchdog for NASA and the space industry. Like NASA Watch, the popular social media account's mission is to inform the public and hold the administration accountable. 
an anonymous spokesman for Rogue NASA said, there are literally thousands of people with better qualifications, and added that the general mood among people watching Britainstein closely is one of cautious optimism with a bit of cynicism. Britainstein has done some things in his past as a politician that certainly raise eyebrows and are cause for concern, many of which involve topics he now is responsible for implementing at an agency or national level, he told News Pulse News. The man who sits there now may be able to navigate the halls of Washington to effect positive change better than his predecessors, and that's where the cautious optimism mentioned above comes in, the rogue NASA spokesman said. LGBT advocates were among those skeptical of Bridenstine's record in Congress, so he preemptively addressed concerns of bias during his first agency town hall on May 17, as long as I'm at the helm of this agency, there will be no discrimination based on race, religion, sexual identity, sexual orientation, ethnicity, national origin, or anything else. In Washington, people like to put people in different groups and then create large divisions and say you're on one side or the other, Bridenstine said. At NASA, I'm trying to bring everything together.